Hello everyone and welcome to the Crafty Cauldron. I am Jo Beth Sexton and um, I am here to do a short tutorial for you. Um, I was inspired by Gail Augustinelli when she did her um, her she d does these really cool belly bands that have like slats in them and they're they're really neat because you can you know weave something in and out of them and and it holds on really well but I was putting together some scraps the other day and I was just like well that's a great idea let's just adapt that somewhere else if you hear my cat she's a little weird today sorry about that okay so here's what I have and it's probably going to be really really evident about how to make it um, when um, when I show you what it is the louvered journal page is what I'm calling it and it is this this is the page now the page is made out of scraps and micropore tape or surgical tape and basically all it is is a page with just louvers louvers just louvers and you can use it for like tons of different stuff. You can put bookmarks in it, you can hang things in it. But what I did with it the first time was I made a waterfall uh, notebook. And um, all I did was I took a bunch of paper. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I took a bunch of paper pieces and I, I hung them on the louvers. So there's, there's our prototype right there. And you can see that it's got like, you know, if you want to weave something in and out of there, you can, you can weave it, for heaven's sake, like this, just the same way as um, Gail Augustinelli did with her belly band, but the belly band was, was vertically, it was um, horizontally oriented instead of vertically oriented. So there we have that. So let's go ahead and, and make one of these real quick because really, honestly, and this is my new journal. It's a Reader's Digest gutted book and I'm having so much fun with it because it's, it's one of those true junk journals where I just use whatever. It's really fun. So, um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to, first of all, you need to figure out how wide your page is. For this one, it's just under 10 inches. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, what I'm going to do is um, make one as if I'm making one for um, a uh, the, the size of book that I like to work with, which is a nine by six, which means that it can be it, it can be an eight and a half by eleven. And since all of these most of these offcuts are from a twelve by twelve, they're all going to be too long, so they're going to have little you know we're going to have to take off a little bit of the of the edges that's okay that doesn't matter take off an inch and that I'm going to save because that'll make a nice little cluster so there's that and then you want to make sure that the pages if your page is going to be like for, for the um, 9 by 6 books it's 8 and a half by 11 and it's 8 and a half tall so what I'm going to do is it's either going to be, it's, it's going to have to be too short rather than too long because if it's too long, it'll just stick out of the book and it'll get, it'll get messed up. So we're just, I'm just going to go and I'm going to use these scraps. Now these scraps are relatively thin. It's, it's just craft paper, like, um, paper pad paper, but it's not, um, cardstock weight. This is a cardstock weight piece of paper. And I was thinking that I could use it. Now see, that's, that's an eight and a half by 11, but it's, it's too short. So I can either not use that. Oh my gosh. You know what? I bet that paper that I was using was already trimmed off of. So I'm not going to use those. Okay. I just found it in my scraps and I said, Oh, looks right. Apparently it wasn't, but I like this one. This one's kind of cool because of the, the stripes. So we'll use that one too. So we're going to do it eight and a half by 11. Let's do the 11. Make a little stack over there of those little scrappy things. 
I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll mark the side of my paper. Oh, that won't work. Pick up a white gel pen. That's really smart. Okay, let's just make it eight and a half. So, eight and a half. Hit my finger there. So I want it to be that tall and then 11 wide. And you need something that's going to help you keep them in line, which drawing a line on the paper is, is a really good idea. Also, leaving your ruler down is a good idea as well. But let's just keep going along here. Take off a... And you need to get them all right, measured correctly, because once you... Once we get into this, once we fix, you know, affix the pages the way they're going to be, then um, they're going to have to be, um, they're going to have to be straight. You can't, you can't trim them. Which is kind of a, a you know, flaw, I guess, in, in, in you know, if, if you want to look at it as a flaw. But let's see. Let's use this one. That would be kind of cool because it's got two sides. We're going to flip these, some of these over. So there's not, so it's not all white on one side, and that's why I wanted to use these as well, is because I wanted to, um, I wanted to have more color, but that's okay. We can always use, if you want, you can use, you know, whatever paper you want. You can use uh, tea dyed, coffee dyed. Um, you can use graph paper such as this one, if it's long enough. <laughs> Or you can use, you know, whatever you want, whatever you want. Let's see, is any of this double-sided? And I don't think it is. And that this one's double-sided. Let's use this one. It's like handmade paper. It's kind of a pink sparkly, and I don't really use pink much. But this is a cool paper. Raggedy edge right there. And then let's use one of these. So that's where we're going to stop. Oh, that's got a end on it, a pointy end that makes it too short. So. There we go. Oops. Wow, the handmade paper is so... It's so thick that it's throwing everything else off. Oops, let's just put that up there. Okay, so what we have is like eight and a quarter, eight, eight and a sixteenth or something like that. Okay, so what you want to do now is, let's get my ruler. And I'm going to flip over a couple of these so there's they're not all white on the same. And if you want to take them and and ink the edges so you know you have a little bit more of a distinction between the color of each slat then that is is perfectly fine just go crazy you know figure it out how you want to do it what suits your aesthetic and um and then just just do it so we've got that i'm just going to go in there let's get some more ink let's do some more ink oops I watch Amy Crafty Cat a lot, so I'm learning how to ink my stuff really fast. Thanks, Amy. You're a great teacher. You might not think you are, but you are. And Gail Agustinelli is too. I will link both of them. Uh, well, at least link Gail, because that's where the inspiration comes from. But yay, Gail. I know you inspire a lot of people, and you inspire me all the time. You're not the only one that inspires me, but this time, this is you. So we've got that, so that's kind of grungy. I love grungy, grungy is good. Let's see, I don't want to grungy that one up too much. Let's do a little bit on this one. Just a music sheet. A little bit here and there. And it really doesn't matter which way it goes. Like I said, you put it there the way that you want it there. And this one is just too much all the same color so I'm going to grungy that up as well and the other side is white so I'm really gonna grungy that up some yeah yeah 
make it look a little older. Something we don't always want to look a little older. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so here we go. Let's just straighten these up a bit. My little pad thingy is shutting. Probably because I, I use it too. I, I push too hard when I use it. I know I do. But I like the way that it that it puts the ink down when I push it harder. So, you know. Now, what we want to do is we want to put something on top of this so it'll hold it down. But you also want to make sure that you leave yourself the room to put, to have a center open. So we've got 11. So we're going to have five and a half is right about here. Right where that little blue mark is. So oh, we'll go over just a little bit. I'm going to lay that one down. I'm going to try to keep it straight. Being straight, of course, you know, in junk journal world is impossible or undesirable. <laughs> and what we're going to do is um, I'm using Micropore tape. This is surgical tape. It's really good. It's mostly see-through. It is um, very sticky. So once it's down, it's pretty much down. So be careful with it. You want to put it past the top. Hello, kitty. Here she is announcing herself. You want to put it past the... What is this? I've got stuff on my tape. Oh, it's fuzz. Okay. Put it past the top. Celine, for crying out loud. I know you're in the room. Put it past the top and past the bottom because we're going to trim it. And that's the better way to do it rather than having it too short. So I'm going to put it right down in the middle. Center it as, as best you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly in the center. Push it down and give it a good, you know, make sure that it's good and stuck. And then once it gets stuck, it starts being more see-through, which is really cool. So I'm going to get my scissors. Sorry about the reach. Get my scissors here. And I'm going to trim that. And I didn't trim it all the way, but that's okay. I may not even need that ruler anymore. I'm going to pull that up. Micropore tape does come off the paper somewhat. I don't like to ever count on it coming off the paper because sometimes it doesn't. I think it depends on the paper, the humidity, how hard you push it on there, etc., etc. Oh, well, I took a little bit off of the paper, but that's okay. That's not going to matter. Okay, I'm sorry about my sniffles. My allergies are really bad today. Um, my sinuses are, are not in good shape. Okay, so this one is a little crooked right here. There's a little separation. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. So don't don't get. We're not looking for perfection as far as as in ordered rows goes. We're looking for something that we can use and out of our scraps. So um, let's do this. On this end and what you want to do on this end is you only want to use half of the width of your tape so this half of the width goes on the paper and the other half does not oops is past the edge of the page you just want to pull that up let's trim this off here as close to the page edge as you can and if you don't get it on the page edge you really do want to make sure that you that you trim it a second time to end uh get it onto the page edge just as close as you can so there's like almost a non-existent maybe a, a, a teeny tiny fraction a nano fraction okay let's get this one and what we're going to do with this one is um on the edge let's just well let's just do this one first I'm all over the place all the time. This is how I create. I just I just go. So we're going to put use only half of the width on this one on the edge. Like this. You guys probably already know where I'm going with this. Half of the width. Okay. Let's trim that. Mm. There we go. Okay, don't need that anymore. Well, not at the moment anyway. I'm gonna flip this around. 
and trim this like that. Boop. Yes, I booped. Okay, now let's flip the whole thing over, which is easier. You can do it the other way too if you want to, but flipping the whole thing over is, is just easier. So we're making a page edge here. This page edge is going to keep all of these in line. Okay. Can you imagine what this would look like if you had like coordinating colors and, you know, just, you, you just, you, your possibilities are really, there are many. I won't say endless because that's not necessarily true, but many. Okay, we need this tape a little bit more. We're going to do um, an inner hinge right here and you can sort of see, I can see it where the tape is right here. So what I'm gonna do is put my ruler down right there so I can kinda keep track of where it is. And I'm going to put this down and I'm going to make sure that it goes up above the top and below the bottom. And then you can use washi tape for this too, that's not a problem. You can glue a piece of paper as long as the paper is pliable enough not to bind up your, your, um, the folding ability of the paper. If you're putting it in the center of a, of a signature, you know, you can, you can just glue it down if you want, but, um, I prefer using the tape simply because that way if I feel like moving the page, I can move the page and it's not a really big deal. So um, now what we're going to do is we want to make sure that we're folding it. This is, this is like we're almost done here. We are folding it almost. Yep, there we go. Line it up as best you can. That's pretty good. You want to make a soft fold at least and then come back and crease it. So now we have this page and what we can do with this page is, let's see here, let me find a piece of paper, fold, fold other papers in half. This is how I used it the first time and, and I really like this because I like the look of a waterfall notebook. Um, I don't always want to put a whole notebook in though because it's bulkier, but you can always just like, you know, you can do one paper there. And oh my gosh, you guys, don't worry about the paper that I'm using because I have tons of paper. Let's do it this way. Let's put this one here. See, we can do it like that. And then you can stagger them. You can make one end shorter than the other and just go to town. See that? So now you have created a page where you can add all kinds of, of journaling paper for whatever, in, in whatever pattern you want to add it. And it will also hold on to, if you have cards that are narrow enough, this card isn't narrow enough, but you can tuck a card in there and you can tuck in um, a journaling card and, you know, you can just like, let me get this out of here so I can just demonstrate it better. If you're going to use it for a journaling card, you can put the journaling card in here and go, you know, weave it back and forth. And can you imagine if you had like some really muted colors, maybe a printable page and you, and you just use that page and you, and you cut it into strips and then put it back this way you'd have to reinforce this because once you start slicing it it's going to weaken the page and you probably want to, to reinforce this so it doesn't tear but um i mean with micro pour or washi or a, a glued on piece of paper or whatever and then you know you've got you've got a journal what if you you know you use a, a muted soft pastel paper printable or or a paper pack paper and then use a, a contrasting color of um journaling card and just tuck it right in there. See that? It doesn't fall out. It's really cool. And there you have it. I call it a louvered book page, journal page. 
And now I have one for my next journal that I do that is a true junk journal. But you can adapt it so many ways. So many ways. So uh, I want to say thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, if you want to know where I found the micro core tape, you can find this anywhere. This is You can find it at Walgreens, CVS, drugstores, Walmart, um, you know, surgical supply, whatever. It, you can find them all kinds of different places. Um, and then the, um, the paper, I'm just using, all of these were, were cut off because I was trimming my paper down to use ugly 12 by 12s to print on and I had to cut them back down to um, eight and a half by 11 to fit through my printer. So I had a whole bunch of off cuts. And I was like, whoa, look at that. Look what I can do with that. And here you go, the inside of the page, the back of the page. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And then when you sew it in, it's got this extra reinforcement right here, which might make it a little harder to, to poke the needle through, but or to poke, poke the all through. But it, it once it's through, it's through, and that's not it. It's not going anywhere because it's it's been reinforced. I mean, it's really cool. So there you are. Like I said, questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments below. Um, you can contact me through my email through um, Instagram and my Etsy store. All the links will be somewhere either in my um, YouTube channel banner or um, in the description below the video. So peace, love, and remember it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Make it a happy, crafty, and colorful one. Everybody be safe out there, stay well, and be kind. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.